Hello everybody, and this is going to be the homework for chapter 6.1. So I did record this lesson, and you can find that in the video section, so let's go and get started. <coughs> so maybe pause the video to read the questions. So what they're looking for here is a bell-shaped. So we want a bell-shaped. And the bell-shaped one is going to be this one here. That's the bell. Okay, and that's like a normal distribution. Okay, so what are some of the main things about this standard distribution? <coughs> and that would be a mean of zero. What's up? Nothing. All right, I'm going. Okay. A mean is um, the mean would be zero, and the standard deviation is one. That's one of your three properties that we talked about at the beginning of that video. So a normal distribution sort of looks like this, where these are like x values, sorry z values. Yeah. Remember, a z score measures how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. So if you're a really tall person, you're probably a lot of standard deviations of the mean. You'd be like up here. If you're a shorter person, your z-score would be down here. Okay, z. Okay, so the way this works is this is called a critical value. And it basically says this. If you have a normal distribution, Remember, under standard normal, it's zero in the middle, and the, the standard deviation is one. So over here, you have the Z alpha. If you draw a line from here to the top, this is the alpha right here. It's whatever that percent is. So that's area to the right. To its right. Okay, so when you have a normal distribution, this shade that's under this curve, all this area right here, all this area, that's what they're talking about. That's kind of a bad job there. Let me change colors a little bit. So this shade is 100% is under the curve. That's everything. We have, we have three ways to say this, and one is area, probability, and relative frequency. So that's how, those are the three names we call this section, like maybe this section right here. That could be area, a probability, or a relative frequency. There you go, no table. Okay, so there's an instructor tip. You guys could take care of this, and this stuff's all over the video. So we're trying to find this shade right here. If you notice, that's to the left. So the left is going to be a less than or equal to. So what we need to do is open up Stat Crunch. Oh. Now, lately, my Stat Crunch has been doing something a little funny and I, I used to have to I have to go this way and then come up here so you could kind of follow my steps sorry I'm just trying to get back to that homework that's not it there it is right here. Sorry. Okay, so now we're here. Let's go into Stack Crunch. And what we want to do is we want to go to um, Calculator and the normal calculator. Like I said, we want to change that to a less than. It's already there. We want to keep this fixed because these are 0 and 1. It's a standard normal. Okay, 
So, I'm trying to figure out how I could get this both at the same time. Okay, so let's see what we want. We want the area to the left of 0.99. So what we want to do is put a 0.99 in here. And then compute. That's the answer right there. So what I'm doing is I'm control. I'm hitting control. I'm trying to see the easiest way I could do this. I'll keep it off like that. And then I'm going to paste it in there. Find out how many decimals, four. So that would be, that should be it. Good. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing, but we need to go above. See the shades to the right over here. It's to the right. That's to the right. So we need this sign. And then it's um, negative point nine seven. So I'm gonna switch my sign here. And it's negative zero point nine seven. And it's a greater than. Their picture should look like my picture. So there, see all there to the right. Oh, there's the answer, so I'm going to select that, control C for copy, go back to here, control V to paste, I need four decimals, so I'm going to come over here, kind of analyze the situation, that needs to go to a four, the so four and zero. I don't technically need the zero, but. Okay, so this is going to be a between of between and let me just write it down so I don't forget so we have a negative 0.94 and that has to go all the way to 1.27 and it's between I'm looking for that shade now obviously that shade can't be bigger than a hundred percent I come up here and I'm hitting this between up here get rid of that and negative 0.94 Four. and then that needs to find the shade from that value all the way up to 1.27 and then compute so 4 looks like that's going to be it Okay, so now they're giving me this percentage. This shade right here is this value. Now I'm trying to find this Z right there. So they give me, they give me an area of 0.2296 and I need to find, sorry, the Z score. It's gonna be the same thing, we're just gonna work backwards. Now, sometimes students will get confused. Oh, should this be, okay, this is gonna be standard. Should this be a less than, or should this be a right, a, a greater than? Well, I'm changing it to left. See, when you make the thing point to the left, it turns the left to the color. Now, this shade goes over here. So this is where the area goes. So area, usually we call it area, or we call it probability. Those go there. So I want to put that, I want to put this uh, 0.2296 there, 0.2296. And what happens is when I put enter, the answer, our answer is going to pop up here. So we're just working backwards. So 
that's our answer. And of course, it's going to be negative because we're on the left side of zero. Any shade, any red part that's less than 50 will put, give you a z-score over here. So I'm copying that. Come over to the question. Paste it. And then you go two decimals this time. So you always have to pay attention to decimals. That always gets me. Okay, so so we need to test greater than. So I'm looking for these keywords, greater than, between, greater than this. So which one's greater? That's there, and these are greater. So that's going to be the one. Okay, the probability. I need to uh, no. Oh, I'm bored. What's your pin number? Huh? What's your pin number? For what? To watch a movie on Netflix. Uh, ten twenty three. What's that? One zero two three. All right. So I'm reading this thing and I'm like, okay, greater like we just did. So I'm trying to find this shade right here. So. When I go to do it on stack crunch, I'm like, okay, well, see, this is a less than because it's shaded to the left. I need the shade to be on the right. Okay. And I think it was negative um, 0, 0.0, no, not 0, 0.67. I think that's what it was. So greater than this value right here. I'm just going to double check it to make sure. Okay, to one point that. Okay, so you'll see that when I hit computer and I bring this back in, you see that this curve looks like this curve. That's negative 1.67 right here. So this is my answer right here. Okay, four decimals, not five, two, five. Okay, man, zero, draw the graph. Bone density between this and this. I'm just gonna let you guys do this one. But this is the one, oh wait, let me make sure. Negative 2.09. Trying to see the difference between these things. Draw the graph and find the probability. I don't see a difference in these guys. Oh. Negative 2.09. Oh, I see, I see. Assume there is, is given a bone density test scores that are normally determined to draw the graph to find the bone density test. This might be a bad question. I mean, obviously it's this one. They're probably saying which one are bad. Because these are all the same, it looks like. So it must be this one. No, nope. correct answer is A. Well, if you could figure it out, I don't know. I think the question is a bad question. So just skip that one. I'll be sure not to put it. Less than 3.79. That's this one right here. Okay, you guys can find the probability. Just make sure it's a less than and go below that. Okay, good. This is one we haven't done yet. Now remember, percentile is a shade to the left of the value we're interested in. So the 97th percentile is going to be this one because this shade is 97% and this little area to the right is 3%. Because 
because the other ones aren't that way. Now to find this, it's not too hard. It's, um, we just have to use the curve here. And then since it's a percentile, I want this red to be on the left. So I flip it to a less than. Now the red's on the left and I put 0.97 over here. Remember, this is area and these are z-scores, or values, data values. So this is my answer right here. Two decimals, so that needs to go 80. Assume 2% are rejected because they have readings too high and another 2% are rejected because they have too low. Okay, draw the sketch with the cutoff separating the lower values. So it's gonna be this one. It's kind of hard to see, but these two, this is, that's 2% and that's 2%, leaving 98 in the middle. So there's 98 in the middle that are okay. And then this 2% and this 2%, totals to be 4% total. So 4% of the people are, are um, over, okay? Okay, so now to find the cutoffs, we are going to put in, um, we'll go to our normal, go to stack crunch. Now I need to get 2% here, and I need to get 2% over here. So what I'm gonna to try to do is, um, no, I'm not gonna do it that way. So what I'm gonna do is keep this as a less than and put this 2% on the bottom side. So 2% is 0 0.02. When I hit compute, it's gonna give me the lower side. So this, the cutoffs, use a comma, okay? Okay, and we wanna go two decimals, zero five. So I'm gonna do a comma. Now if you notice, the distance from this middle over to here, that's negative 2.05 below. Now, or just, sorry, 2.5 below. And that's gonna be the same distance above, so I just need to put a 2.05. Now I could do this, I could come back here and change this to a 0.98, or sorry, I could change that to a greater than and put in 0.02. Now see that's the 2% on the right and you get the same exact number. Okay, this problem is exactly the same. So it looks like it's gonna be that one. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna do the same exact thing that I just did, but instead of having 0 0.02, I'm gonna have 0 0.14. I'm gonna have 0 0.14. So it's gonna be a negative and a positive. See if I change the sign, I change this to a, sorry, Those two values are gonna be the same. But the only difference is this is gonna be negative and then that one's gonna be positive. So you guys could run that one. Okay, I'm gonna do one of these. So I did one earlier, but the way that this works, these critical values, I'm trying to find this, this little 2% is the 2% over here. And that's the Z alpha. And that alpha is 0 0.02. So all I have to do is come up here. Since it's on the right, I'm gonna change this to a greater. Now my shade's on the right. And this is where your shade goes. This is where your area goes, 0 0.02. There you go, that's the answer. 
I always cut and paste, and once you get the hang of it, you go real fast with it. Two decimals. Okay, this is the same thing, but instead of having a 0 0.02, we're gonna have a 0 0.06. Let's change over here. Okay, so that's gonna be your answer on that. Okay, standard normal, convert to percentages. So they want area. So they want between negative two and two. So we just go negative two over the two. Boom, there's your answer. Okay, that's 6.2, let's jump to 6.3. Okay, now 6.2 is gonna be this pretty much the same thing as 6.1, but it's gonna be dealing with real data. What is the difference between the standard normal and the non-standard? Okay, so let's see this. So this isn't right, that should be zero and a one. Standard normal should be zero and one, so that's right. That's definitely true. That's not true. Nope, it's this one. So if you look at my video, I have, I have a nice explanation for that. Okay, so this is basically the same thing we were just doing. The same thing. If I draw this curve, the only difference is the mean. The mean's different now. The mean here is a hundred. Okay, that's a hundred. So when I'm coming over to my, to here, let me see, it's 115. So this is a hundred. Uh, let me get off between, go standard. So now my mean's a hundred. My standard deviation is 15. Now I just have to find out what they want. They want 95 and below. So since it's to the left, that needs to go left. Just make sure it's that's right and that's right. Okay. So the answer here is just almost 37%. Four decimals. So as that you can see that it's like the same thing we were just doing. But this one is different. If you notice. They're giving us a shade. They're giving us an area or a probability and they're saying, hey, what's the value that gives us that? So we need to work backwards here. So we have 0.55 to the left. 0.55. So I'm gonna put the area in here, make sure it's to the left, and the, our graph should look like their graph. Just take a look at this real quick. 0.55. Yep, that's right. So here's your answer right here. It said one decimal, so the eight rounds that to a nine. Okay, so same thing, we have 105 and a 20, so I'm just gonna change it real quick. 105, and we're gonna go over here to 20. Now this is a between. We need an IQ between 92 and 118. So, so 92 on this side, 118. So basically what this question is saying is, this is 105, the spread around there is 20, 
you come over here to 92, you come up here to 118, and then we run this thing, compute, they're saying about 48%, so this is kind of a bad drawing, this is 48%, so a little less than, than half. first quartile. So the first quartile is going to be so I'm looking at this mean the standard deviation. Okay, first quartile that person did better than 25% of everybody else. So I'm looking for that score right here. So what I'm going to do is check the mean in there. The mean and these are changing. Standard deviation 17.1. And we want to put 25 over here. It's backwards. That's the tricky part. Working backwards. I need a bad standard. And I need a less than. Sorry. It glitched on me. Okay, 25%, point less than, so this person would get 90.1. Let's paste that in. And then switch up with those decimals, don't they? Okay, let's see what I did wrong. 101 point, oh, 101.1. There you go, you guys probably caught that. I'm trying to go too fast. Seventeen point one, let me make sure it's seventeen point one, yep. Hopefully this is it. Let's check. There we go. Survey found that women's heights are normally distributed. Okay, good. So let's draw the women which curve. Okay, for this one I did the same one on the on the uh, my video. So if you need help with this one, go check that video out. I did the same one. I don't want to do it twice for you. Okay, I'll do this one. Assume that body temperatures are normally distributed. Perfect, let's go. I'll draw it out here because then I can write it over better. So the normally distributed 98.19 with the standard deviation of 0.61. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just chuck those numbers in real quick. Okay, hospital use 100.6. Okay, so coming over here and putting a 100.6 as the lowest that we considered. So anybody that has this or higher has a fever, so these people have fevers too. Anybody here or higher has a fever, so I'm looking for this shade right there. So we could do that very easily over here. Just make this a greater because I'm on the right side. Change this to a 100.6. Oh, not a lot. Hmm. 
Now they want this as a percentage, so you have to be a little careful. Well, how many of them want to round by? Two decimal places. We might be able to put zero in here. Yeah, we could put zero. So what I'm talking about is this. The answer is point zero 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 one two three four, and I'll just put a four there. Now, when you change from a decimal to a percent, you want to multiply by 100, which is going to move that twice over. So the answer is 0 0.004. But they said round to 2, but this 4 doesn't round, so the answer is 0, 0 0%, which is just 0. So hopefully 0 works. Should work. Okay. Does this percentage suggest that the cover is appropriate? Okay, so. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't know, I'm going with that one. Okay, so if they, want, if they only want five peop, five percentage of the people to have a fever, so what would you do is you'd put a 0 .05 on the top side. So these in red, these numbers down here to the right, these are all people with fever if it was 5%. It means 5% like of the numbers from here to here. So if you have whatever this, the 99.1, which is right here, if you have that or higher, that means that 5% of the people have fevers. So that's your number right there. Okay, round to two. The three doesn't mess with the nine. Okay, and I'm gonna let you guys do this one. It's sort of the same idea. Three hundred and eight days or longer, lowest four percent. Okay, I'll go ahead and just do this one. Okay, so two sixty seven. Standard deviation of fifteen. Okay, so three oh eight or longer. A longer is that. So, off to my normal curve. On average, it's 267. Standard deviation is 15. And we want to change this inside guy because we're trying to find days, not percents. And let's see what this gives me. 0.003. Cut that. decimals, space that in, one, two, three, four, to the one. There we go. Okay, babies are born for me. Okay, premature would be the, the lowest 4%. I'm just going to use the same curve. I change colors here. The lowest 4% is here, so that's 4%. I'm looking for this guy. So we're working backwards on this one. We're working backwards. Since it's less, I want to left side, I want to put that and put point zero four. Oop, dingo. Okay, good. Okay, there we go. Two forty. There's integer, so an integer is something without a decimal, like a whole number. That should be it. What condition would produce a negative z-score? Negative z-scores are less something that's less than average. It's that one, left side of the curve. 
Okay, there's 6.2. There will not be a 6.3. So we're going to jump to 6.4. And 6.4 is pretty much like 6.2 and 6.1. So once you get the hang of it, these things go pretty good. Now, there is a pretty common mistake here when you guys do this homework. So let's just do some of these. And that's not knowing the standard deviation. So you really want to watch the video on 6.4 to learn how the standard deviation gets affected. Okay, so there's a uh, simple random sample, and she uses the mean in her sample. And what conditions the sample may be treated? Okay, so if the population is normal and if the research collects more than 30 samples yeah that's those two I'm not sure what C means but if the stu statistics students have has a normal maybe not 30 samples so let's see that okay so it's the first two the GPA has a normal distribution if we have 30, 30 or more. That's another video too. Okay, so here's the reason. Here's the rule. So the rule is if the population distribution an N, is roughly normal, then you can have any size. This is to use the CLT. If the population distribution is non-normal. To use the normal calculator in the central limit theorem, you have to have the sample size has to be around 30 or more. Okay. I know this is greater than, but we're good with greater than or equal to. Okay, this would be a yes because we took more than 30. That's how it works. You have to be careful with the wording now, but the sample incomes, I don't know, that's not a good way to work it. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay, okay. What they're saying, this is the sampling distribution. So these are talking about a graph of x bars. What this is talking about is the graph of the data. The graph of the data will always be the same as the population. Not always, but pretty much the same. We could look at it as the same as the population distribution shape. So that's the difference. So this is definitely a no. Okay, yes, the sample, the, no, the population income values for the sample. Okay, okay, see, the sample means will be normally distributed, so it's a yes over here, but the sample of incomes was skewed to the right. That's it. Kind of read through this and it didn't jump out at me, but. Okay, this is pretty much what you have to be good at. So now, they're saying, okay, well, the overhead reach of females is normally distributed with the mean of 197.5 and a standard deviation of 8.6. Find the probability that an individual be greater than 206. So here's 206, 80, draw a line up. It says over, so I'm going to shade over here. That's very easy. That's just what we did before. So I'm going to change my mean. There's a mean and standard deviation, and I need 
See, this is the right side, so this needs to change to a greater than. Flip that to a two of six. 80, and voila. That's your answer right there. Around roughly 14%. Four decimals, the six is gonna take that seven to an eight. The six is gonna take that to an eight. Okay, good, now this is where it gets a little tricky. Now, the, this is the population distribution. So that's like individuals. This is gonna be the sampling distribution. So we have to ask yourself, can we use it? Sorry, this would be X bars. These are all X's. These are all individual lengths. These are the average of lengths. To use the central limit theorem, we need the population to be normal, which it is. There it is, right? The normal distributed. If you look earlier, as long as it's normally distributed, we can do any size. Okay, so to use it, now our mean is gonna stay the same. If you watch the video, you'll know this. So the mean is 197.5 but the standard deviation is not going to be the same anymore. The new standard deviation is going to be 8.6 divided by the square root of the 20, because you pick 20 randomly selected distances. This is greater than 196. So the mean is going to be the same. The mean is still 197.5. These are X bars. They're not individuals. They're averages. And there's your standard deviation right there. We need to go to 196, draw a line up and shade that way. So let's go ahead and do this. See, watch, there's your original standard deviation. Watch how this is gonna change. SQRT, that stands for square root. And 20, I picked 20 people. Okay, and I need greater than I think this is 196.2. That's what mine said. So, see, that's your answer. Hopefully, we got it. That eight's going to take that four to a five. Okay, can, can we use a normal distribution of part B even though the size, sample size does not exceed 30? Yes, because the original is normal. It's this last one, the original is normal. So you're gonna get a lot of these and they're all gonna say the same thing. An engineer is going to redesign an injection seat for an airplane. The seat is designed for pilots weighing between those weights. The new population of pilots has a normal distribution, blah, blah, blah. So this is the same as the old. So since we're picking one pilot, we're working in the population of individual pilots. So the average pilot is 160 with the standard deviation of 32.1. Hey, what's the chance we pick somebody and get 150 and 201? I don't know. We're looking for that shade right there. And by the way, this is going to be a between. I want to start my finding my area at 150 and at 201 and voila. Go. Okay, now we have 35 different pilots. Now notice, they did, oh, they did say that they were normal. The new population of pilots is normally distributed. Okay, so we have normal distributed. So now, these are individual pilot 
weights. These are going to be X bars. They're going to be averages of size 35. So I pick 35. I get this. You pick 35. Somebody else picks 35. Everybody picks one. Th uh, everybody picks 35. The average will stay the same by the central limit theorem. So if you learn the central limit theorem, it says they stay the same. The only thing that's going to change is this guy, 32.1 divided by the square root of how many we picked, which we have 35 pilots. That's how much the standard deviation goes down. So now we need to do the same thing in between 150, 150 and 201. The only thing that's different is this, this graph over here on the left called a sampling distribution, it's more narrow because it's less variability. So they're more clumped up to the middle. That stays, that stays. So this is going to change. I'm going to do a divided by sign. I'm going to do the square root, S Q R T, open parentheses, 35, close parentheses. It's way more because they're way scrunched up next to each other. I would say part B. We gotta stop. Or C. I'm not sure what that they're talking about there. Don't worry about that part. Okay, so try to use the same logic that we just used for this one. It's the same type of stuff. These are all going to be the same. Okay, so let me show, let me walk you through this one. This one's a little bit more tricky. An elevator has a capacity of, this is the most it could be, 15 passengers. So what they say is the mean passengers have a weight of 153. So this is the average from 15 average people. So that there's 15 people, the average is uh, if the average is 153, then they would be right at the cutoff. Oh, that's not the mean now. Let me get that out of the middle. Okay, there we go. This doesn't make sense either. Okay, 153. If it's that or more, it seems like there's a good chance it's going to be overloaded. Okay. Now we have to be careful on this one because this 33, it's 33 divided by the square root of 15 because we're picking 15 people. There are 15 random people getting on the plane. Or not the plane, but the elevator. I'm going to do this one, but the problem really doesn't make sense. Hopefully you can see why it, does, <coughs> why it doesn't make sense. It's essentially saying that the average is 161, but it's going to be overloaded if it's more than, if it's more than 
153. It's going to be overloaded every time. Greater. This should be really high. So it's basically saying it's going to be overloaded 82% of the time. Okay, here's the follow up. Doesn't seem safe. There's a good chance they're going to overload it. Okay, this is the same thing. It's the same type of problem. Just make sure you change your standard deviation. I'm just going to put in a crazy number here. I know it's going to be wrong. Just to get you to the next one. Okay, see the 38. So now what's going to happen? Your mean is going to be the same. But your standard deviation of your x bars is not going to be. It's going to be 33.5 divided by the square root of... How many did we pick? 38. So make sure that stays the same and that goes down. And then do a between and you'll be able to get this one with no trouble. They're all the same. Most people just forget to change the, the, the standard deviation. Same thing. They're all the same. This should be the central limit there. Which of the following is not commonly used practice? This is definitely, I don't think that's true. Although maybe it is. I know A, B, and D are true. The sample, the distribution of sample means. That's true. The population. I mean, A looks like a fact, but. Okay, so, oh, here we go. Okay, that's the thing that everybody messes up, so make sure you get that. Okay, so that's the homework. Make sure you guys put the time in, and thanks for watching. Appreciate it.